Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to dive into how you can improve your web applications with AI content generation capabilities. Instead of spending countless hours building a rich text editor from the ground up, we'll leverage the power and the flexibility of Frawala. So our goal today is to show you as developers how to integrate a simple AI assistant indirectly into Frawala, allowing your users to modify uh, their text with just a few clicks. So we'll focus more on the core logic and how Frawala makes this integration straightforward. So as you can see here, I highlighted uh, text here inside the Frawala editor, and it opened up the inline toolbar. And this is the working example already, which has the AI assist and the magic wand. You can simplify text, make it longer and or make it shorter. It's just a simple demo right now, and I will show you how you can directly create uh, your own AI-powered editor within Frawala. We'll start with a basic HTML structure. Think of this as the foundation of your web application. We'll need to include the Frawala CSS and JavaScript, and also Font Awesome for our AI icon. So the core idea is to add a custom button to Frawala's inline toolbar. When a user selects text and clicks this button, a dropdown will appear with AI actions like simplify, make longer, and make shorter. We'll then send the selected text to a backend AI service. For example, I will be using DeepSeek API for testing and update the editor with the AI's response. First, let's include the necessary CSS files in the head of our HTML. Uh, these links will pull the styling of the Frawala editor itself and the default theme. So I'm just going to copy and paste this inside the head. Next, we'll include Font Awesome for the icons we'll use in our custom button. Just going to paste it here. Finally, before the closing body tag, we need to include the Frawala editor JavaScript file. I'm copying and pasting this for brevity, but you will get the full code inside the GitHub repository in the description below, so you can uh, follow along there. Now let's look at the basic structure within the body. I'm going to paste the main content here and format it. So basically, uh, inside this container, we'll be adding a, a simple instructions for the user. And the crucial part is this div with the ID for Walla editor. This is where Frawala will be initialized and where uh, our users will write and edit content. For demonstrations purposes, I've added some placeholder text about the long awaited GTA 6. Now let's get into the JavaScript that makes the magic happen. I'm going to paste the script file or script text under the Frawala editor, format it so we can see it better. And I'm going to go line by line so you can see and understand how Frawala makes everything easier. We start by listening for the DOM content loaded event to ensure that the page is fully loaded before we initialize Frawala. So, the first thing we do in this event listener is to find our custom icon for the AI assist button, the magic wand. Uh, Frawala provides a convenient way to do this. So as you can see here, we're using font awesome five here. The fa five name magic tells Frawala to use the magic icon from font awesome, which will be rendered as an I class fast fa magic area hidden is equal to true under the hood. That's a mouthful, and we will give this icon the definition name AI Assist icon. Next, we register our command, which will be triggered when the user interacts with our AI Assist button. We name this command AI Assist. The title property sets the tooltip text that appears when you hover over the button. The icon, as I explained earlier, is the property that links this command to the icon we just defined using its name as AI Assist icon. And then we set the type to drop down because as you saw earlier, we want a list of AI actions to appear when the button is clicked. 
Focus Falls is the one that prevents the editor from losing focus when the dropdown is shown. Undo True allows the users to undo the AI actions. For example, if you didn't want the text that DeepSeek sent back. So uh, you can do it by saying undo is equal to true or undo and setting it to true. And refresh after callback uh, set to true tells Fruala to refresh the toolbar after the AI processing is complete. This is important for us since DeepSeek is a bit slow when calling via API. Uh, this is very important. The refresh after callback that is set to true. And now we go to the options block. So the options property defines the items in our dropdown. So here we have simplify, make longer, make shorter uh, with their corresponding user-friendly labels. And finally, the callback function. Uh, it Basically, this is executed when a user selects an option from the uh, dropdown. It sends it back to Forwala. So again, the, this one, the simplify, it's basically as is simplifying a text, make longer, make things longer, and make shorter, makes the text shorter. And this function uh, provides uh, for a while uh, a way to see when a function is executed, when a user selects an option from the dropdown. So to dive deeper into the callback function, so this one refers to the command itself. So callback CMD refers to the command itself and selected option key is the key of the option the user clicked. So for example, if a user clicked simplify, that will be the key. And we get a reference to the for while editor instance using this. Then we retrieve the text the user has currently selected in the editor using the uh, const selected text and getting it by editor.selection.text. We then do a quick check to ensure that the user has uh, actually selected some text. So if not, we show an alert and exit the function. So if all this is true, so for example, if a text is selected, we call our process text with AI function, passing the selected text, the chosen AI action key, and the Frawala editor instance. That will be this one. And that process text with AI is this async function here. So this is where the core AI integration happens. This function takes the selected text, the AI action, and the Farawala editor instance as arguments. So we start by logging the original text and the requested action to the console for debugging. So I just added this here so we can see actually later what the original text was in the console log and the AI action requested. So for example, if someone clicks the simplify button, the AI action requested would be AI action requested simplify. And the original set of text obviously would be the highlighted text later. We then define the variables to hold the specific instruction we'll send to the AI and the system message to guide the AI's behavior. So basically this is the prompt engineering part where you can uh, tell the AI what to do. Uh, this is up to you how you would want to uh, prompt engineer the instructions. But basically, we want the AI to simply return the modified text without any extra conversation. So this one is the instructions and the system message. Again, this is you, you can modify this for yourself. Using a switch statement, we construct the instructions for AI based on the action selected by the user. So for example, if the action is simplify, the instruction will be simplify the following text and the highlighted text. It goes for the same, make longer, make shorter. And again, I just add this, are these console logs. So we see what the system message and the instruction would be. So make, to make sure that the actions are in line with the user is doing. After that, we then temporarily disable the Frawala toolbar, so it, it makes it gray, to prevent the user from making further changes during the AI processing. It's just a, a fail-safe, so we make sure that the AI gets the selected text and not something uh, that the user did not want to be modified. And then this one is 
we initialize a modified text variable with a fallback message in case the AI processing fails. So it's like an error handling thing where, for example, the Deep Six uh, servers is not working. It will be, it will show here. Next up is uh, the API keys. So here you would typically configure your API key and endpoint for your chosen AI service. In this example, I'm using DeepSeq. So uh, obviously it's very important for you to change the API key with your actual DeepSeq API key and ensure that the endpoint is correct. In my case, I'm using DeepSeq and the endpoint is the chat completions. It's their latest V3 model. I'm using this because it's cheap and it's very good for testing purposes and it has a really nice way to uh, return text and it's it works quite well. Next up is we have uh, a simple check to alert the user if they haven't configured the API key or the endpoint. And finally, the request body for our API call. So including the model we want to use and the array of messages containing our system message and our user instruction. So yeah, the model is DeepSeq chat and the messages is here. Now we use the fetch API to make an asynchronous post request to the uh, DeepSeq API endpoint. So it's, it's using this. We then set the method to post, include the necessary content type and authorization headers using the API key, which we have set here. And we send the body as a JSON string. So we check if the API response was successful. If not, we try to parse the error details from the JSON response to provide a more informative message. But if the API key and the endpoint is working, we don't really need to uh, go dive deep into this. But just a try-catch error nonetheless. If the response is successful, we parse the JSON data. We then check the structure of the API response. We expect it to have a choices array with the first element containing a message object, which in turn has the content containing the AI generated text. And if we find any content, we trim any leading or trailing white space and assign it to the modified text variable. I made this because the response or the message that uh, DeepSeek replies with has markdown uh, syntax. And for easy, uh, to make things easier, I remove the markdown syntax format so it doesn't interfere with any formatting you have uh, currently with within the Froala editor. And an else block which uh, if the API has an unexpected structure, we log the error and set the corresponding fallback message. And lastly, the catch block that handles any errors that might occur during the API call, such as uh, network issues, and it displays an alert through to the user. After the AI processing, whether successful or not, we, we log the final modified text to uh, the console. And then we use the editor instance that HTML that insert modified text to insert the AI generated and cleaned because of this text back into the Forala editor at the current selection. So this actually is the uh, main part. So this replaces the text within the Forala editor with the response from DeepSeq. And we enable the editor instance again. This part enables the Frawala toolbar using the, uh, again, instance toolbar that enable, because before we set it to disable this one. And we are just re-enabling it here after uh, everything has been sent back so that the user can continue editing. And the last part, and definitely not the least, is where we actually initialize a Forwala editor on the div with the ID Forwala dash editor. We set the toolbar in line to true, 
so that the toolbar appears directly above the selected text. I set the car character count to false, so the word counter shows at the bottom. And the toolbar buttons, this is very important as well. So the toolbar buttons already defines which buttons will appear in the inline toolbar. We include basic formatting options like bold, italic, underline, strike through. Then our custom AI assist button. This is very important to have this part in the toolbar buttons. As you might remember, this was initialized here as register command AI assist. We go back here and followed by list formatting, undo, redo options, and select all. So this is where you tell Fawala to display your custom command. So I'll select some text. Wait, let's, I'll refresh this page, select some text, and you can see the toolbar uh, shows up in line and the icon that we set earlier, which is the AI Assist. You see by clicking this, you see custom drop-down buttons as well, the simplified text, make text longer and make text shorter. So as for example, I'll click simplify text. The editor is disabled as we have set it before. So it's checking or it's sending the selected text and it's here. So the original text was simplified and you can see in the console log, which we uh, set earlier, the original text is here. The AI action requested is simplify. Oh, actually, I'll zoom in. The original text is here. Action requested is simplify. And the system message, which is the prompt that we sent to DeepSeek. User instruction for AI and the text after AI processing. And let's see if the make text longer is working. AI assist, make text longer. Uh, wait just a couple of seconds. And as you can see, it's here. Uh, it got uh, the text made, or the AI made it longer. I'm just going to remove the extra uh, quotation marks. You can, uh, you can clean this up even more, but it's just a demo. And again, let's go to the console log. Selected text is here, and the AI action requested is make longer, which triggers the uh, make longer uh, case scenario in our switch, uh, switch case block. And there you have it. A basic AI content assistant integrated directly into Frawala Editor. And so as you've seen, Frawala makes it incredibly easy for developers to extend uh, its functionality with custom buttons and commands. By leveraging this, you can quickly integrate powerful AI features into your web applications without the complexity of uh, building your own rich text editor from scratch. It would take hours and hours and hours for you to do it. And this example just provides a basic framework. You can expand this, or you can expand on this by adding more AI actions. Integrated with integrating it with different AI services and further customizing the user experience with Frawala. You don't even have to use DeepSeek for this. To make it faster, you can use OpenAI or Cloud. It's just going to be a bit more expensive, but uh, as in my experience, they have they are a bit faster than the DeepSeek calls. And thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like the video and subscribe for uh, more Frawala tutorials and how Frawala can be integrated with uh, AI uh, web applications. Oh, and also you can find the complete code snippet in the description below. This is actually part of our blog series uh, showing how Frawala can be integrated into uh, AI. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.